this book? Every time I put this novel down to go do life stuff, my heart had an owie. Elizabeth Hoyt rocks at words. And her Maiden Lane series is made of fairy dust and gold. Asa is a streetwise business owner trying to get his theater back up and running. Eve is a plain Jane illegitimate artist with the dude phobia. Well, book, you've got my attention. She finds herself the unexpected owner of Asa's purse strings. And oh my god, the fireworks, they explode. Our hero is an earthy, unpolished, working class dude. He's an, and I quote, a lover of opera, a fighter of highwaymen, a shouter of arguments, a savior of stray dogs. Catch me, I'm swooning! And y'all, my heart went snap, crackle, pop over this hero's hard eyes. Eve has got a shit-tastic past that Asa pursues against using everything except his hands. Translation? This heroine's no-touching policy creates all of the sexual tension. Literally all of it. It made everything hotter. Asa inquiring, may I, sounded like a Kama Sutra position. I will not kiss you or touch you in any other passionate way without your express word. <laughs> Sir, your dirty talk has got me flailing into another dimension. Because holy flaming ovaries. That carriage scene! Somebody get me because I wasn't ready. My ovaries just went kablooey. First they were fiery and now they're dead. And that, ladies, gentlemen, and kiddos was a reenactment of my reading experience during that scene. That thing proved that a heroine can and be sexually woke even as she's toting 197 pounds of trauma baggage. For it was the hottest bit of happy pants that I've ever read in my damn life. Because ostensibly it was a sex scene without sex. It worked because Eve holds all the power. She controls the romance and the story. And I flim flam freaking fucking love that. She's fundamentally a survivor of her past not a wimpy, weak, wilted wallflower. Girl is practically a shut-in, has got no looks, and is terrified of men. And yet, she bites back when barked at, and she never cowers, but rather makes tactical retreats. Eve got me snatched, but this OTP, it got me wrecked in the good way. Specifically, when Eve has a panic attack and Asa hands her flowers. Can I live, please? Elizabeth, you are trying to kill a fangirl. She's a murderess. Our boy is one rung beneath Eve on the social ladder, so he craves her respect. Even as, damn it, he won't be ignored or pushed aside. And holy flippin' frackin' that's hot! Hell, the whole damn book is frippin' frickin' fra frickin' frackin' blah blah blah. Hot! That's for lots of reasons, but my favorite is the fact that the plot never overshadows the characters. Yes, Eve's got finance stuff and Asa's got theater stuff, but fundamentally their romance is about their romance. And about they smexy times. Normally, I don't give two hoots at hooters about sex scenes because often it's just choreography. But hot diggity, not here. Like, this book actually had an OTP sex talk and it made it hot. That right there is proof that dialogue is infinitely better than the insertion of peg A into slot B. And when our babies finally do do the bedrock rockin', the pound down was emotional porn so good I could die happy. <laughs> No lie, guys, Elizabeth Hoyt has my heart on speed dial. She gave me everything. An interracial marriage, a gay couple, a surprise gender swap. Hell, there was even a blind character. And you bet your booty I went out and insta-bought her book. I need you in my brain. Because Hoyt makes you care about all the peeps in her story. Normally, all I ever give a damn about is the OTP. But not here. The Sweetest Scoundrel has an itty bitty subplot that features the heroine's big bro. And I cared so much. Not only did I care, but I shipped him and the housemaid Bridget. I need them to have all of the tiny humans. Count that, fangirls. That is two. Two 
two subplots and ships that I gave all of the dams. I'm not a series fanatic, but of the Maiden Lane's 12 books, I have read five and fangirled over five. Yes, that's partly because Hoyt is a cracktastic writer, but it's also because the Maiden Lane series is Regency, not in a ballroom. It takes place in opera houses and gambling hells and even the back streets and slums of London. Which means, dear Lizzie, if you quit writing, I will hunt you down. Fangirls have needs, damn it. I apologize if my outro got a little bit creepy there. I'm not a stalker, I promise. Or am I? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Mm. But I will potentially be able to meet her at RT this year. I apologize if I was very obnoxious and annoying in this video. That's a possibility because I want to do naughty naughty things to the words. <laughs> I am so freaking weird. If you guys haven't read any of Elizabeth's books, especially her Maiden Lane series, I will stake my fangirl reputation on the statement that you will love her. If you like historical romance and you like badass women and hot ass men, you're gonna love her. I'm also gonna apologize if my lighting is a little weird. I got another softbox and I don't know if I'm overexposed. If I am, it's gonna be right in here. It's gonna be like, I have highlights on cheeks. Except I don't wear makeup, so there's that. If I am, I'm so sorry. I have timed it perfectly because now the garbage checks are running. Which means I'm gonna shut up and start editing. And try not to die of embarrassment over how little chill I had. No promises.